And the last two cycles, inventory and finance and investments, I'm going to combine them in terms of the recording because they're going to be a lot smaller being asset cycles as opposed to transactional cycles like the three we've just covered. So less controls, but they will necessarily have to be controls. So in terms of inventory, we've got two elements to consider, the stock count and then inventory production. In terms of the stock counts, I'm just going to talk over the controls and rather focus on the inventory production when we're doing the documents in the cycle. So for a stock count, guys, there should be count instructions that are given to all who are going to participate in the count beforehand, explaining the layout of the factory, what needs to be counted, what should be left and not counted because it's maybe not their own stock. The counters should then be split into teams of two. They should sign taking receipts of count sheets, which should have the description, but not a quantity. They then need to count together so that there's segregation of duties, note it in pen, and then hand their count sheets back for processing. Where there is then a difference between what was counted and what's recorded, they need to then have a third count, so additional segregation of duties to make sure that this is the actual stock that they need to have recorded in their accounting records. And if it differs to what they have, there needs to be an inventory adjustment form, an amendment form to change the records to reflect what they really do have on hand. Okay, there must be security in terms of if you're going to be leaving the warehouse where it's been counted, you should be searched so that we can ensure that stock isn't stolen. And that should be coupled with cameras, security guards, and the locking of the warehouse whilst counting is taking place. So people can't move in and out and, and take goods that they shouldn't be. Okay, so guys, that's your stock count in a very short nutshell. Now I wanna get onto the inventory production cycle. So this cycle is going to start with a production schedule, which is going to detail all of the items that they are planning to produce based on revenue targets. Then there will be a raw material requisition. This is them requesting the raw materials in order to meet the demands on that production schedule, followed by raw material issue notes, which is what they actually got from the raw material holding cells. There's a job card then that is used to record all costs incurred in order to manufacture. And then finally, a finished good transfer note. And this is when your finished goods are transferred to the holding area for dispatch based on orders. What needs to be included on each of these documents? Production schedules need to have all the inventory that needs to be produced. The raw material requisition needs to include the quantity of the raw materials required. The raw material issue note will have the quantity of the raw materials that they were able to issue based on the requisition. It should match, but if they don't have in stock, it will be less. The job card will then have the quantity of raw materials used, the hours in terms of labor to manufacture, and then any overheads incurred to manufacture the finished good. And your finished good transfer note will then include the finished good quantity that has been transferred to the holding cells. So guys, this can be a little bit confusing because it's all internal, there's no external requirements. So let me just draw a floor plan to explain how it works. So imagine this is your factory floor plan, okay? And we're gonna separate it into the different areas. So there's a raw material holding area. That's where they keep all their raw materials. They then have the work in progress section. So that's where they start manufacturing. And then a finished good holding area where they hold all the finished goods manufactured. So production is gonna start in the work in progress area where they're going to require raw materials. They're going to request them from the raw material holding area. The raw material holding area will then issue whatever they have based on the request, and then work in progress will manufacture the goods. Once the goods are finished, they will send them to the finished good holding area where they are ready for distribution. Okay, so let's think about some of the controls. In terms of pre-numbered documents, they are all pre-numbered because they are internal documents. So, production schedule, raw material requisition, raw material issue notes, job card, finished good transfer notes. Next, authorization. 
every document should be authorized here because it is internal. So production schedule must be authorized, the requisition authorized, the issue notes authorized, the job card authorized, the finished good transfer note just needs to be signed as being accepted into the finished good area. Segregation of duties everywhere where we've got that arrow, as we could see in the visual of the factory, they all split, so the people involved will all be different. Access controls, there's physical inventory throughout, so they need to have access controls throughout the cycle. Security, cameras, locking up, and so on. Reconciliation, each document to the previous, so your raw material requisition quantity to your production schedule, your issue note to your requisition, your job card quantity to your raw material issue note, and then the hours need to be reconciled to my wage clock card because it's the labor hours that we're talking about on that job card. And your overheads to an allocation schedule, your finished good transfer note quantity to the job card quantity of finished good items. Okay, that's inventory production, guys. So finally, we're going to look at the finance and investment cycle. And guys, this cycle won't be big because they don't purchase and require finance often. So it'll start with a capital budget, which will detail what they need to purchase and what financing they require for the purchases. Then there will be minutes of meeting. These will be the minutes of the director's meeting authorizing whatever it is that they want to finance or invest in. Then there will be the invoice or the contract for what was invested or financed. And then there will be the general ledger, which will record whatever it was that they purchased in terms of investing or what they required financing for. So not a large cycle, very limited documents, very limited controls because it doesn't happen often. So it's not a very recurring type of transactions that they will be entering into. So how they mitigate risks in this is they get the directors involved. The directors will set the capital budgets. They will then authorize any new investments or financing required in the minutes of their meetings. And then there will be the contract or the invoice reflecting the details of what was authorized in those minutes of meetings. Okay, so looking at the specific controls, authorization is going to take place at the capital budget and the minutes of the meetings and the invoice or contract will have to be authorized all by top management. Segregation of duties, guys, I know we've got our downward arrows, but it's not applicable here because this isn't recurring transactions top management will authorize throughout. In terms of reconciliation, what was authorized in the minutes must be reconciled to the capital budget, the invoice and the contract then reconciled back to the minutes of the director's meeting. And those are your cycles, guys. Let's attempt a question, guys. You are going to have two minutes reading time. And eight minutes writing time. So please go and look at the class example document for the first question.